you want. Now, with no further delay, uh, I'd like to introduce you, Tom, and a round of applause. I've never been introduced by a, a poo story before, so that's kind of cool. Uh, hi, I'm Tom. Um, the, I, I spent the last year building a spaceship in a caravan uh, with a couple, few other people as well, um, and this is a sort of horrific, harrowing story of how we did it. Um, so, who, we, who are we? Uh, there's Charles, who's just gone running off to the van. You'll see him in a second. He's responsible for the electronics and the video system that I'll talk about, uh, the booking system. There's me, uh, wrote pretty much all the software in it. Uh, Tim, there, who uh, sits in the corner and complains. I told you I'd do it. Um, and uh, Chris is not here. So what? I'm not, I can't edit it. I'm using IE. <laughs> There's Claire, who's our, our trusty driver and bookings assistant. And boss. Um, <laughs> uh, Chris, who I don't think is here, uh, he did a bunch of the prop work for us. Uh, we also have a bunch of other people. Um, so Russ, um, Tef, John T, basically anyone at the London Hackspace on a Tuesday night becomes our test players and uh, we abuse them. And Tef is an honorary captain as well. Uh, he's a lot nicer to people than we are when we play it. Um, so what it is, uh, it's a three-player story inside a caravan, a spaceship, and the crew's taken on a small training mission after being given a bit of training, and they fly, and they usually explode. Uh, what it actually is, is a caravan full of Arduino's laptops and several kilometers of orange wire that isn't labeled. Um, <laughs> there's a, if anyone hasn't played it yet, there will be spoilers in this. Um, we'll be playing it later on. I'll announce how we're going to sort that out in a minute. Um, so this kind of happened because we bought the, uh, has anyone heard of Artemis? Yeah, excellent. Um, we were playing that and thought it does need more explosions and actual props and things, uh, stuff falling off the ceiling and smoke machines. So I started ripping apart the network protocol. Uh, the developer wasn't particularly helpful with this, so obviously you just fire out Wireshark, and it turns out he was just throwing struts into network packets. It was really, really simple to pull apart. Uh, so I wrote a proxy which uh, takes game events and throws them out over open sound control so we can trigger smoke machines and other displays and all kinds of fun things. Um, that's on my GitHub site if anyone does want to have a go at building a spaceship. Um, I wouldn't. Um, there's a few problems in that Artemis is kind of hard to play in about 15 minutes. So if we're going to take this whole thing to other places to play, we can't train someone to play that because it's basically a sim. So we jokingly thought, why don't we write our own simulator? How hard can that be? Um, and then we thought, well, that's cool. We've got that done. So where can we install all of this? We can't put it in a room anywhere because no one's got a spare room that we can permanently assign to this. We haven't got a garage. Uh, the hack space probably wouldn't let us do it because the room needs to be used for other stuff. Uh, so we jokingly said, hey, why don't we use a caravan? And then Charles bought a caravan. Um, and it turned up, and that was it. It was about 200 quid, and it was uh, held, the, the body shell was held on with ratchet straps because it was a complete state. Uh, we bought it from the same people that uh, Brainiac get theirs from. So I'll give you a clue of what it was like. Um, so <laughs> I did a bit about the, the design process, uh, which is basically, wouldn't it be cool if... Uh, which usually happened on IRC on the toilet, uh, wandering back from a pub somewhere or while hitting the crap out the inside of the van with hammers. Um, and that led on to, oh my God, yes. Uh, very rarely did we say that's a bad idea, which is probably a bit stupid. Uh, we wrote, basically, I, I sit and write some code for this, uh, usually on my lunch break at work or in the evenings or on the train or anywhere where I had 15 minutes and somewhere to put a laptop. Uh, and then we'd all sit around <laughs> just laughing hysterically at the idea and then it would go back and we'd add more. Um, and eventually we got a plan, which was the players would be introduced to the ship, uh, they would launch, prepare for a hyperspace jump, slingshot around Mars, fly through a training area, and then return home and, and dock with a rotating station. Uh, what actually happens during the mission, uh, this is a bit of a giveaway, the slingshot maneuver goes totally wrong, the ship breaks, you have to repair it. The training area is actually a war zone with live targets, um, and the station is rotating and there's no docking computer. That's not true, there is one now, but we don't tell anyone unless they're being particularly bad. Um, we decided we'd need a kind of a pilot, tactical officer, and an engineer. Uh, that was the basic idea we had when we started doing this. Um, the other thing is, I can't write anything with AI in it at all. I've never bothered to learn anything or sit and figure it out. So let's decide. We decided to have a games master sat in the back of the van, running everything instead. It actually turns out to be really fun because if we're doing an eight-hour day with this. It's kind of nice to have uh, one person outside training the next crew, one flying the current crew, and one person in the back killing them. Because the one in the back is actually somewhere. It's really nice to sit and have a drink. Um, and you can toy with people as well. It's really fun. Uh, so as a bonus to that, the GM room is actually labeled transporter room and is functioning. Um, so the idea is that 
okay, this is a massive giveaway. Uh, no one knows that we're in the back room and the transporter works halfway through the flight. And um, yeah, someone jumps out and kills you. Um, <laughs> yeah, also we have, a, we have a video system on board as well. So the original plan was to have um, the crew would be flying and would be instructed over a video call how to fly the ship, basically your mission controller. Um, it turns out for various reasons that wasn't ever going to work, uh, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, so once we'd, we, we kind of designed it, uh, we decided to set about doing the actual hard work, uh, which was, that was the state of the caravan when we got it. It was full of crap. <laughs> it was rotting, uh, the shell was falling off. Um, There's a lot of rotten spars holding the, the walls up, well not holding the walls up. Uh, we smashed all of those out, swept out the inside, started painting the outside to waterproof it because it wasn't, it still isn't waterproof actually. There's a leak above one of the seats. Um, there's anyone that played it last night, we'll find out. Um, so yeah, we sat there painting it black. Uh, uh, and then we decided we actually had to build the thing inside. Um, we found, uh, Chris and I found a huge chunk of MDF behind our flat that no one was guarding. So we, <laughs> we took that. Um, people were quite happily saying, oh, you're the guys building the spaceship. Do you want bits? And I'm like, yeah, give us switches and buttons and things. So in the top left-hand picture there, um, the right-hand console has got a keyboard which was from a police radio control unit. Phil had a whole load of those, and he just kept saying, do you want them? We're like, yeah, give them there. They're really cool. Uh, the joystick, that was actually a, a force feedback, Microsoft force feedback stick. Um, it died. Um, and they're really hard to get working with modern software because they're, this one was actually a game port, so we had to hack and adapt it together, and that didn't last. Um, there was a lot of bodging in this. So we yeah, eventually painted everything. There's uh, Chris on the, on the right-hand side assembling the, uh, the uh, uh, engineer console. Um, that was buttons, junk. The keyboard in the middle is actually from a cash register. It's now a USB keyboard, uh, which is quite fun. Uh, I mean, installed the transporter room door, finally got a dashboard in place. And uh, at this point, we realized that actually I'm going to have to sit and write this because um, we built bits of it, you know. Uh, this is the first ever version of it, which uh, I think the screenshot file was created in November a year ago, about that. Uh, and that's the first time I ever got Unity to actually talk to an Arduino. That was horrible. Um, uh, there you go. There's the keyboard there. So we started, we started building all the systems that the ship's going to use. And it's really cool writing this because you realize you're writing a spaceship. Um, not like a game. You're actually kind of putting physical things in and then you look at it and go, and get all excited. Well, I do anyway, but, you know, I own a spaceship. So uh, we started building the reactor control panel, which is a bunch of switches and lights and some really disgustingly bad soldering down there. Please don't look at that. Uh, and this, this is <laughs> the first time the game ever ran in one uh, with all the machines, uh, all the, the clients connected. Um, that was on my desk at work during my lunch break, and all my coworkers were wondering what the hell I was doing. I'm, like, I'm writing a spaceship, go away. Um, <laughs> it, basically, it basically worked at that point. Um, so we kind of decided we needed a deadline, as you do, and we thought, well, no, Maker Faire's coming up, the one in Newcastle, so let's apply for that, which we did. And they said, yeah, cool. We panicked a bit because we basically hadn't got any of it working. Um, and the night before Maker Faire, we were sat in the car park, basically building pretty much all of it. So we got the dashboard installed, the engineer console uh, just about fit. We had to slice a whole load off the top to get it in because the measurements were wrong. Uh, we attached the door, installed the hardware. Um, we did actually totally forget to take the network cables with us. So in a six hour drive to Newcastle with a rotting caravan behind us, we weren't sure if it was going to be safe or not. Uh, we get there and we got no network cabling. Um, we had no seat for anyone to sit on. So we kind of, yeah, it went a bit wrong. <laughs> we spent most of Saturday morning um, shouting at each other, trying to get it working. And we had to send out, like, Jonty and Russ ran out to get his network cables from Maplin at quite a big expense. Um, we finally got it all in, and, and, and it sort of worked. Um, that's it working. That's the first ever time it ran in the caravan with all the, uh, all the hardware in place. Um, well, that's probably not the first one, actually, because there's no one swearing and pulling their hair out there. Uh, we had a great testing. <laughs> the Maker Faire was the test for this. We kept getting crews in. So the first crew that came in, it was like a family, like uh, two kids and some parents. And they said, can we have a go? And we're like, okay, we've got to sit level with you here. You are literally e the first people ever to actually play this in here. Um, so things are going to go wrong. And they were like, oh, yeah, you know, it doesn't matter. You know, it's, it's home built. That's fair enough. So we'd start the game up. Something would either non-catastrophically or catastrophically go wrong. And we'd have to spend 15 minutes with me repairing it or someone fixing it. And then we go outside and say, who wants to have another go? And it was a really weird testing thing. You start like throwing software in front of someone and saying, you know, does it work? There was three people sat there going like, this is a spaceship. We're like, yeah, yeah, but you know, what didn't work? What did you think was, what do you think was really difficult? What did you think was bad? I don't care, it was a spaceship. We're like, 
Uh, thanks for your enthusiasm, but um, yeah, we, yeah, can we get some more feedback on that, please? Um, and as a, as a kind of a safety thing, we uh, decided to have a captain, captain sat in the cabin uh, with the players so that when things did go wrong, you could dive over the dashboard and pull a cable out or plug a cable in or kind of gloss over it with storyline. And that ended up working so well, we've kept doing it. Um, we brought it back for Maker Faire. Uh, this is the point where we decided to add more things and tidy up what we had and start trawling this out to other places. Um, this is the phase we call where did all that time go because it kind of, oh, this was ages ago. So we had a, a huge list of problems from Maker Faire um, when we finally got useful things out of people. Things like the engineer wasn't actually fun at that point. The keys were too small to read. You couldn't actually tap them. Uh, it was kind of a, a, a grid of very tiny writing. Um, and it was really difficult to read them in the lights, so we ended up buying some USB lights. That didn't really work either. Uh, so we thought, oh, screw that, let's scrap it, let's do something else. Uh, the targeting system was and continues to be very difficult to use. Um, I'm working on trying to make that not rubbish uh, at the moment. Uh, pilot radar is confusing, but the problem is that I know how to read the radar because I wrote it. Um, and also, anyone that's played Elite is generally okay with it because it's <laughs> an entire ripoff of the Elite radar system. Um, a lot of this is rip up, ripped off from everything that I like about space games, so that's cool. Uh, the captain bit in the cabin works really well, not just for glossing over problems, but also for kind of uh, immersing people in the story a little bit more, and people start to build up their own little stories around the game, around the sort of common theme of it's your first day flying this, have fun. Um, uh, we have had uh, uh, George's here. No, we keep stealing his line about people having their first, uh, this is their first flight after five years of flight school, and everyone just looks up like, five years of flight school? We're out in the car park with a folder, does that count? Um, one of the puzzles is based on USB cables being connected in a hurry. Um, let that one sink in. <laughs> that went, that broke. Um, there was a massive panic by the guy trying to connect everything. He broke one of the USB connectors. Uh, but it was hilarious because they died. Um, so apart from the actual problem list we have, we've got a big Trello board full of things. Uh, there's a section marks, you know what would be cool, right? Uh, so the windscreen should crack. How about we get a success screen? There. Uh, more switches, more buttons, uh, what if things fall off the walls? Um, can we get a self-destruct for really bad players so we can get them out and get the next crew in? Can we get a chase cam? Um, can we record players with cameras? Can we, can we have a button that you should never push? We're like, yeah, of course we can. So we got uh, a chase cam with a projector. That works quite nicely, actually, and it's really fun for people outside because they can watch their, play, uh, their friends fail. Um, so the top right there, we added more switches to the engineer console because if you're running a nuclear reactor, you should sit in front of it and go, and be really scared because it's a nuclear reactor. Um, and obviously we had a button that you should never ever push. And people do, it's lovely. Uh, Self-destruct we added for fun, um, that was quite nice. We decided to add Christmas tree lights because all spaceships have Christmas tree lights. Um, they don't know they're Christmas tree lights. But uh, And for a laugh, we, uh, we tend to run uh, games on Tuesday nights in the Hackspace where um, you have a timer running on the dashboard and it's a scripted, totally scripted thing. There's no one in the back trying to kill you. Um, and basically how quickly can you get to the end of the game and four minutes 26 is the current record uh, if two people want to huh? no 426 this is the most, this is the only documented one anyway it doesn't matter I was flying so <laughs> um, we'll try and beat that later we'll get some beers first if anyone wants to try beating the record uh, two people is a good team uh, one of you is bouncing around the cabin doing two jobs and the other one's like intensely flying but it's really fun um, well, yeah, we decided to have more physical puzzles because people really enjoy um, people really enjoy getting up and doing things. They they get confused. Uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, so we added a yeah a Jane's manual, which uh, Tef sat and corrected a hell of a lot for me uh, in one Saturday morning. <laughs> um, we had emergency repair kit, which is actually and these these cables here need to be reconnected in a certain order for the ship to continue working. Um, and if you unplug them, it stops the ship working, which is really funny. Um, and this is all kind of related to the same thing. So there's a manual which tells you to use the repair kit to use the uh, to plug things in in certain places. Um, so we started off quite basically with this. It was quite a simple game to start with, um, and then it's evolved. So this is basically what it used to look like: switch connecting a bunch of machines, a couple of screens, smoke machine, a couple of puzzles around the cabin projector, uh, and then we're like, yeah, this is what it looks like now. Um, <laughs> So a uh, comms machine has a, a long webcam, a uh, long USB connection to the back room. Uh, so people keep saying, how are you streaming video so quickly over this network? And we're like, we're not. It's just a very long USB cable and a camera. Uh, we've added wireless to the caravan. Um, that's actually really useful. We've got a couple of, uh, couple of tablets, uh, Android tablets, which now control the entire game. They're quite nice because you can bring them into the cabin with you and start playing with only one person in the ship. Um, we have uh, some fans that now turn on and off, depending on how much power is uh, in internal systems. Um, Exploding flap, that always 
makes me chuckle. Um, <laughs> that's, a, that's a flap on the wall that pops open and drops things on you. We've got a strobe light, um, which is now broken. Uh, Seatbelt signs, cabin, uh, cabin lighting. Uh, we just went a bit crazy and started adding all kinds of stuff. Um, on the bottom right, you actually see a thing that says video server uh, with five cameras attached. So hang on one second. Uh, Charles, you there? Can you turn the cameras on? Yeah, good to go. <laughs> so it's on. Hello, Emath. Do you read me? Yeah, yeah, we got that. Hello? You want, yeah, I can read you, yeah. <laughs> you there? Yes, we're here. <laughs> hello, excellent. Hello, Emath. <laughs> um, hello. Yeah, so, um, uh, shall I take you through the uh, camera systems that we have in here? Cool. Um, well, I'm currently in geosynchronous orbit above you. Um, and, uh, yeah, we're, um, let's see, where should we start? Um, so, uh, we, uh, we, we got a, a lovely grant from Floss UK who um, provided us with a uh, set of five 720p cameras that are hidden around this ship. Um, so, uh, we've got... Uh, One's hidden so you can see the main view screen, uh, the captain, which is normally standing here directing everybody and telling them to get out of the way and actually press the buttons that the screens are telling them to. Um, pilot position, uh, hiding down here. Um, and uh, you've also got the tactical officer over here as well. And uh, the hardest job of them all, if you're going to play tonight, is uh, over here at engineering. Um, and yes, uh, it's all running off of um, the lovely software written by uh, Copenhagen Suborbitals um, called Snowmix, um, if you want to use it. Um, it's really handy stuff. Um, it lets you do um, any kind of uh, video editing. Um, you can switch between uh, cameras, do overlays like you should have on the screen at the moment. Um, Hello, you're still there. <laughs> um, cool, so um, yeah, um, and that's all running off of a Dell server uh, which we traded for a box of cupcakes, um, as much of this spaceship uh, happens to be like that. Um, and that's all controlled by, I uh, don't know if you can see that, uh, one of our many tablets that hides in the back, and then we can uh, change which camera you're viewing. Um, and what's going on in the ship. It makes us extra evil because when we can see your reactions and we know that throwing a missile at you is going to make you panic, we can switch to the right screen and get your reaction on camera, which is a bit fun. Um, yes. I think that's cool. Um, well, I will, uh, I'll leave you and get back to the uh, asteroid so that we can do some uh, training tonight. Good luck. Bye, MF Cam. <laughs> And the, um, the really fun part with that is uh, it streams to Ustream as well. Um, and it's currently streaming to the TV in the bar. Uh, so later on, um, you, can, uh, you can come have a go and uh, watch everyone fail. There's no sound in the bar at the moment, though, because we've lost the cable. But So we had a bunch of really weird, interesting, fun things we've noticed while doing this. Um, the biggest killer of equipment is enthusiasm. Um, we've killed three joysticks. One of them was a, force fee a sidewinder force feedback stick, uh, which they're not mechanically... They're not meant for people to kind of whack around everywhere. Uh, two other basic joysticks have died as well. We just buy multiples of them because this is, you can't really robustify them or anything. I made that word up. That's good, isn't it? Uh, two Arduinos have died because we've got a bunch of relay boards that keep killing things. A floppy disk drive, which was for a part of a puzzle we never got, really got around to finishing. Uh, an industrial machine e-stop switch, um, which that shouldn't really break. Um, <clears throat> If that had been a drill and not the airlock dump system, that would have been really bad. If I had a dead laptop, uh, smoke machines died, and a couple of strobe lights. In fact, one of the strobe lights died on the way here, uh, but that's what you get with five quid strobe lights. Um, pe people tend not to, when they're panicking, they don't read messages in front of them. They just flail their arms around and shout and go, ah, and hit the keyboard, and that usually breaks things. Um, so we have these prompts that pop up on the screen, and then they now beep as well, but people still don't tend to read them um, if they're panicking, and people die. So we kind of figure, you know, if people are, are really struggling to play this, then they're not the ones at fault. It's us trying to throw too much of them at once. So we started simplifying things quite a bit. The docking computer before, 
used to be a, a joystick thing, basically telling you how to twist the joystick and rotate it. That's gone. We now do that by actually handing the player a joystick and say, move the stick around, this is what the ship does. That works a bit better. Uh, it's, uh, now, the docking computer has been replaced with a very, very simplified thing, which is basically uh, align this cross with this cross, and you will land safely. Uh, it really simplifies the game. And while they're doing that, they don't actually seem to realize they're moving the entire ship to fit in the bay. Uh, so it's kind of, we, uh, that's the kind of route I want to I play with a bit more, actually. Like really abstract the game out into small sub-games like this that are controlling the main game. Um, yeah, so players don't read text. Uh, we're trying to balance the, the, the kind of, oh my god, it's complicated, it's a spaceship, against this is actually playable. Um, I don't design games. I, I maintain exchange servers for a living. So <laughs> I have no imagination. Um, uh, so basically, if I, 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 I'm doing a lot of things wrong with game design, I know, but I'm slowly learning, so that's good. Uh, the engineer is a good example of, of, of complicated. So on the left there is the old one with a very simple screen, your balancing power, your tapping keys. So we got rid of that, because that's actually more difficult to play. On the right, we now have a, an entire bunch of switches, which are now replicated on the screen in front of you, uh, roughly laid out the same. So it's a little bit more intuitive. Like If something starts blinking, you can tell roughly where it's going to be on the keyboard, um, on the, the, the switches. Um, uh, we've also discovered that modular hardware is a good thing. Uh, we should have discovered this the easy way by actually reading stuff about this, rather than just throwing money and things at it. Uh, the Arduinos, we're now building these kind of, uh, they're boards with screw terminals down the side. If the Arduino dies, we rip it off and put them back on again. Simple. Uh, strip boarding is evil, get rid of it. Uh, I'm going to do some proper circuit boards at some point. And, uh, we need to keep spares of absolutely everything. Um, uh, players really, really, really like um, physical stuff. They think they're going to play a computer game. And when you yell at them, stand up and take that panel off the wall, there's a confused look of excitement and what on their face. And they get up and do it. Uh, the smoke machine is really nice because it kind of acts as a, a, as a damage indicator. You don't have to read the damage display to see how knackered the ship is. You just take a breath, and that's usually enough. Um, the James manual is going down really well, especially when people get it's a Firefly joke. The only Firefly joke in the van is dead, get over it. Um, slip that one in. <laughs> Uh, we've got a, a couple of a kind of launch procedure checklists and things that the tactical player has to tick and do. They don't go down quite well as well because you've got a pen there, you can kind of tick them off. Um, and beepy buttons. Everyone loves beepy buttons. You just tap things and they beep. It doesn't matter if they do anything, they just like beeping. It's brilliant. <laughs> uh, so if anyone wants to come and fly, we're here for the weekend uh, up by the bar. Um, we're based, uh, also based at the London Hacks base. Um, we t tend to run the game on Tuesday nights. Uh, dep time depends on whether the pub's open or not and they're doing burgers. Um, also, keep an eye on the Twitter account for this evening because we're going to announce when we actually open to start playing. Uh, we're trying not to run it all weekend because at some point I do actually want to see things. Um, uh, but also, we're streaming games on the Ustream channel uh, and in the bar as well. Um, that's it. That's, that's, that. oh, that's a really dark screenshot of someone flying out of the bay. Uh, the old bay, actually. That's been changed. Yes. <laughs> But we will have to run them back and forwards and things. So I'm thinking just like answer questions outside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, boys. Josh, you talking about? You've got five minutes of questions. Five minutes of questions? Yeah. I've only got one mic. Well, you do the preacher bit and I'll, I'll run them. I can shout loud enough. Has anyone got any questions about it? Oh, there's loads of people. You're down the front, you go first. Um, <laughs> did you have any issues with intellectual property or anything like that to actually get this game off the ground? Or um, no, well, I hope not. Um, <laughs> no, all the sounds, uh, sound effects are usually they're all recorded or nick, uh, nicked, <coughs> uh, taken. They're all uh, Creative Commons stuff from Freesound. Um, the textures are all pretty much all my own work. Um, a lot of them are just photos of things that I've mucked around with. The models are all mine as well. That's why they're so awful. Oh no, if you want to, the, 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 all the code models, this entire thing is on my GitHub account. You can download it and build your own spaceship if you want. Um, if in fact you want to contribute to it as well, that'd be really great, because there's a lot of tidying up that I can't be bothered with. Um, or if you want to do any model work, that'd be really nice, because I hate Blender. Um, oh, hello. Is there an age limit on? Um, the, yeah, we usually say, what was the age limit we say? 14? Yeah. Um, yeah, be alright. <laughs> uh, it really depends on which one of the jobs you're going to be doing. Kids, kids flying as pilot. Everyone wants to be a pilot, but no one wants to learn how to do it. It's you play elite. Oh yeah, you're in straight away. You're, you're, the, you're the next pilot. <laughs> 
Oh, they were they were brilliant, weren't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, where can I run to next? I'm going to make my way back this way. Uh, where do you see the game going in the future? Are you going to keep it as a very scripted game, or no? Uh, at the moment, I'm I'm trying to write a new version of it, which is uh, it's more of a toy box uh, for us. Uh, so there'll be, uh, it's kind of FTL like, there's a bunch of sectors in space you can jump between, but at each sector is a kind of, there's, there's the only thing pre-script is the uh, environment at each sector, so there'll be a nebula or a star, something like that, and uh, that'll let you spawn certain things to screw around with the players. Uh, again, we want someone in the back room doing that because it's really fun for us to toy with people. Uh, but eventually we'll get there, it's taking a long time because, uh, uh, oh, you're a bit at the back. Can you just shout? Just shout. Not, not yet. Ask him. Oh yeah, so uh, he was asking if, uh, if we record the camera footage uh, so people can, can pick it up later on. Um, at the moment, uh, the server can just about handle five uh, 720p streams. Um, it's hitting right at the CPU level so much so that I have to start them at five second intervals. Because if all the keyframes hit at once, it falls over and dies. Um, so it, it doesn't have enough to actually save yet. Um, but uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're hoping, we, we currently stream to Ustream, um, but I'm going to try and get it to stream to YouTube so it does the automatic saving and stuff. Yeah. yeah. We got. That's it, okay. Thank you, everyone.